Hello traders and welcome to another video. In today's video, I want to stress on the importance of interest rates whenever you're trading the financial markets, especially or specifically today we'll be covering Forex and how important it is to understand interest rates to understand inflation when it comes to trading Forex, right? And uh, I'm not sure if you can hear, but my voice is a bit scratchy I'm from flu. So I've had flu for the past couple of days, which is why I haven't been uh, uh, recording as much in terms of videos uh, but here we are today right so I just want to stick to interest rates real quick and uh, inflation right so <clears throat> first key thing to remember is the video that I did where we spoke about inflation we spoke about interest rates and the importance of it right uh, of course we also touched on the Phillips curve of which I won't be touching on right now uh, but essentially if we remember that inflation there's two types of, of inflation there's cost push and then there's demand pull right and then depending on that if it's mostly demand pool then the central bank has what an effect or the possibility or the optionality to actually try and lower that type of inflation and then like we had spoken we said that the methods of lowering inflation this is in a in an example where inflation is high so the the methods of lowering inflation is doing what is hiking interest rates from the from the central bank side or it is fiscal policy from the government side fiscal policy essentially means taxes government spending and taxes right so that is what we need to understand so now with this understanding of that the driver is interest rates the driver is inflation we are now going to look at different economies we are going to look at those two variables right remember we're going to focus on inflation we're going to focus on interest rates see which inflation is higher because we understand if that inflation is high above the central bank's target then it means that they will either do one of two things they will either hike interest rates hiking interest rates means increasing interest rates they will either increase interest rates or they will do what they will keep interest rates higher if they have been increasing interest rates for a, for a prolonged period of time so those are the two optionalities and in those in both those two cases capital is most likely to flow into those economies what do i mean i mean that remember financial markets are for investors right so that means that if interest rates remain high interest rates remain attractive then investors will flock into that economy given of course that all the other fundamental data looks uh looks uh, or makes sense right in terms of it supports the narrative of interest rates remaining higher by that i mean that growth is growth is okay it's not like that economy is headed for a recession and all of that right so those are the two things to remember with interest rates right if inflation is high then with interest rates it's straightforward higher the interest rates the more attractive that that currency is <clears throat> sorry or that economy is to the investor or to a potential investor right and remember hiking interest rates actually increases the value of that economy right because there's a return being being be, that you are receiving for making an investment there like i said all the other data also needs to make sense and remember in a video that i did when i was breaking down commodities specifically gold i said that gold is a what is a safe haven and it, it is also a hedge against what against high inflation but then if we have high inflation and we also have high interest rates in the us an investor won't go won't 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 sit their capital or invest their capital in gold why because they are going to get a higher return on, on if they put their capital in the dollar or they invest in the united states dollar because the united states dollar is giving 5.5 percent whereas gold is giving you zero percent you're not getting an interest from gold right so that is where that that is where all of the interest rate dynamics come into play right as much as gold is a good hedge against high inflation but if dollar interest rates are also high then investors will rather flock into the dollar than gold unless if things took a downturn also us is you the united states dollar is a safe haven currency but investors will also flock into gold because things are turning sour or they the outlook of the general economy is no longer that attractive or pleasing or now let's say the fed starts cutting interest rates then you will see money or capital flow from the united states dollar into other assets like gold right so those are the main key things to remember or to understand when it comes to inflation as well as interest rates right so we're going to look at two things right like i said we're going to look at uh inflation first and when you, and then we're going to go into interest rates so if you look at inflation uh we're going to look at let us just look at uh a couple of economies right so <clears throat> we're going to start with australia australia as you can see inflation is sitting at 4.1 percent target is two percent most economies target is two percent some may have a range of two to three percent but we'll just use two percent two percent target right 
what does that mean? They 4.1, which means that they double the what? They double the target, right? So that means what? That means that we are they are most likely to do one of those two things that I've explained. They're either going to hike interest rates or keep interest rates higher for longer. In terms of hiking interest rates, that that looks pretty much out of the picture for the Australian economy, which means that there's a chance they will keep interest rates higher for longer and not look to cut interest rates, which means that economy will remain supported because inflation is high and interest rates will remain higher to try and bring inflation back towards their target of 2%, right? So that is what we have there when it comes to uh, Australia. When it comes to Canada, you can see inflation is at 2.9. When it comes to Euro, it's at 2.8 also still above the two percent target but they are heading there which is a good thing right then we also have uh also have uh one focus on south africa it's very high because it's an emerging e economy we look at switzerland switzerland inflation is now at 1.3 right from 1.7 their target is below two percent or two percent and below right so what does that mean that means that they are well within their target so what is the next step for the swiss for the swiss national bank the most likely step is for them to do what to cut interest rates to avoid inflation digging deeper into a deflationary state or in the negatives because that is where they were previously right and then once it got above two percent that's when they started hiking interest rates and now it's back below so they've achieved their target their their mandate of lowering inflation inflation sorry by hiking interest rates right so that means that now the next likely step not that they are gonna cut but the next likely step is for them to do what to cut interest rates because their inflation is below their target right unlike what we saw with uh with uh with australia or or or, or, or sorry canada but for them they are now below so the next step the next likely step is not to hike but it is to cut right so that is what now the market or that is how now the market is what is viewing the swiss national bank like i said this applies to all financial market asset classes but for today we're just gonna focus on specifically uh currencies or forex right because forex are driven by interest rates guys i don't i don't really care what anyone else says if you understand interest rates then a lot of moves will make sense right in the forex market but also understand the market doesn't move one way it doesn't go up on in a straight line it goes up it ebbs and flows so up down up down so you need to also keep that in mind then if we look at the united kingdom inflation is at four percent target is two percent double the target right so what does that mean the central bank has a as a as, as is more inclined to keep interest rates higher for longer or hike interest rates hiking interest rates pretty much not in the picture but keeping interest rates higher for longer that's a possibility so what does that mean the united kingdom or the gbp currency will remain attractive to investors right if you look at the dollar 3.1 percent also above two percent target what does that mean interest rate cuts are not likely at the moment yes they will cut interest rates eventually because inflation is going down but at the moment not likely right so also possibility of keeping rates higher for longer if we go into australia um, let's go into the australian region so that we can see new zealand as we can see <clears throat> new zealand is currently at 4.7 percent new zealand has the highest interest rates not interest rates, sorry, inflation uh, reading than all the other developed economies. So that means that for the New Zealand or the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, they need to maintain interest rates higher for longer, right? So it's an option of hi higher for longer or increasing interest rates. So what does that mean now? Let us go on to interest rates. So that means in this case, if, if we were looking to sell, uh, let us actually go back so that we can see Japan as well in this case this means that in this case if we were looking to sell here's what would <clears throat> here here are two economies that would potentially look to sell we have japan currently sitting at 2.2 for japan it's a tricky story right inflation moved from four percent or it peaked at four percent now it's back towards the two percent target which is not a good thing because they strictly say in their statement that they want to see inflation above the two percent target in a stable manner and this is not a stable manner especially because it declined towards two percent even with that being said today or in the morning the governor or of the of the bank of japan actually came out and say that inflation is not pleasing in terms of the direction of inflation right in terms of them maintaining or keeping inflation above the two percent in a stable manner those their, that outlook is diminishing unless we get a wage hike in april or on march towards the end of march april right so that is where we stand so essentially if we just look at inflation i would look at japan to sell i would look to sell japan the japanese yen and i'll also look to sell the swiss the swiss the swiss franc right right like i said 
then if we go on to interest rates <coughs> sorry <coughs> if we go on to interest rates we can see so if we go on to interest rates we can see like i said that we have japan they're sitting at negative 0.1 switzerland sitting at 1.75 so japan has the the smallest even in negative territory of interest rates so that is not attractive to investors that it that does not boost the currency right then we have switzerland sitting at 1.75 so they hiked interest rates up to 1.75 moving from negative 0.25 right so sorry negative 0.75 so they're now sitting at 1.75 percent right so they have the smaller interest rates and remember now we're looking for divergences the same way we did with inflation we're looking for divergences when it comes to interest rates if you look at the euro they sing it sitting at 4.5 australia 4.35 that is way above 1.75 way above negative 0.1 that is uh, <clears throat> United Kingdom 5.25, United States 5.5. Then we have, uh, then we also have, if let's go into the Australia Australian region, so that you can look there. And then in the Australian region, as you can see, for New Zealand, they're also sitting at 5.5, which is way above negative 0 0.1 for, for, for the, for the um, Japanese, uh, Japanese yen way above uh, 1.75 for the swiss net for the swiss economy or, or swiss franc right to be specific so that means that in this case you can look to buy all the other economies that we've mentioned based on inflation being high or the likelihood of central banks keeping interest rates higher compared to japanese yen as well as the swiss national bank or this or the swiss franc right so that is the approach that we are using in this case so like I was saying, that is the approach that we are using in this case, right? Obviously, if you also go to the spreadsheet, click the first link down below, that will take you to the currency ranking spreadsheet. It will also show you a similar direction in terms of the direction we're looking to take here. So remember, looking to sell Swiss franc, looking to sell JPY, looking to buy the other economies, specifically against JPY and CHF. So now we are going to go on to the positions that I currently have. So this is... AUDCHF, I have a buy on AUDCHF. Of course, we had we needed to wait for price to drop. Like I said, price does not move in a straight line, but if we understand interest rate dynamics, we are able to hold comfortably. I went into a bit of a drawdown here and my entry wasn't the best, but we are in the move nonetheless because we understand what? Interest rates, right? <clears throat> and the and the prospects or objectives that we are anticipating moving forward. And another thing that is key to this, why are we using interest rate in in in, in as a confluence in in our trading decisions when it comes to currencies because if we are buying the australian dollar case the swiss franc it means that we are buying 4.35 percent of interest rates against 1.75 1.75 percent of interest rates that means that <coughs> we are going to get what a positive interest as long as we are holding this trade so i've been holding this trade for i think two days now so which means that i am getting a interest rate payment that is positive from the broker right in this case ic market from the broker i'm getting a positive interest payment because i'm i'm on the right side of interest rates so that is why i say interest rates are very crucial very very crucial when it comes to trading forex yes also applies to other economies but specifically forex because that is where we get interest that is where we get interest payments in forex money that is why you also get money or interest payment from the central from the bank or from a commercial bank if you save your money there or if you invest your money there right so whenever we're dealing with money which is forex foreign exchange whenever we're dealing with money we need to take interest rates into consideration it is very vital it is very important so that is the first uh, you can see i'm selling I'm, I'm buying against the swiss franc then i also have new zealand chf i'm buying new zealand dollar interest rates of 5.5 against 1.75 which is swiss franc and i'm getting a positive interest if it falls and it takes me out of course that would be unfortunate but it would it would that's what the market would have done at this point i am no longer in control all i was in control of was executing and making sure that i position myself in the best possible position i could i can right so and this is what i did so in this case as well i'm earning a positive interest and this is fundamentally driven by interest rates right and then if we look at also like i said i'm looking specifically to buy against the japanese yen to buy against the swiss franc so if we look at nzd jpy you can also see we haven't moved that much but i'm also get, getting a positive interest payment and i'm holding because of interest rates and like i said if it falls and it takes me out at a drop at a negative or it hits my stop loss 
I wouldn't have lost that much because I, I gained something from interest rates and I'm also holding because it makes sense from the from the from the inflation standpoint from the interest rate standpoint right and I also have cat JPY that I also I'm in a buy position on cat JPY as well I've explained the reasons why and then I'm also in a <clears throat> buy position on GBP JPY right and all of these all of these uh, all of these trades are doing what they are giving me a positive <clears throat> interest payment right because I understand inflation firstly secondly I understand interest rates and I understand the decision or the impact that it will have on future decisions because remember guys whenever you're trading forex in as much as you trade what is happening today let's say we have a news release but predominantly whenever we're trading fundamentals we're trying to project and see that the decisions or the data that we have today whether it's unemployment whether it's inflation whether it's pmis whether it's uh, wage growth whether it's consumer confidence whether it's um uh whether it's gdp the data that we have today how will it impact markets moving forward and that is how markets are always forward looking especially when it comes to forex we are always forward looking right and that is the that is what i'm doing right now by taking these positions and all you have to do once you have this understanding and this direction is to keep yourself up to date with fundamentals keep you keep yourself up to date with what is happening in terms of interest rate all those economic drivers right and then you make your, your decisions based on that how will this affect the bank of of japan how will this affect the bank of uh, of uh <clears throat> reserve bank of australia how will this affect the reserve bank of new zealand you know so all of those things how will this affect the south african reserve bank ask yourself all those questions whenever you're looking at data for for that specific economy and that is where you'll find your answers obviously you also need to pay attention to uh, the central bank statements because they tell you they what they are looking at and what their next move could potentially be but i just wanted to give you guys that no, it's a bit of a long video, but I just wanted to emphasize that if you're trading forex, focus on interest rates. Bank banks, commercial banks deal with money and they charge interest. Right? So don't think for you not paying attention to interest rates, you, you are actually doing yourself a disservice. It's not benefiting you. Otherwise, it would benefit you if you focused on interest rates. Because number one, you're gonna get paid a positive swap for holding longer for longer periods. Number two, the market, remember financial markets are for investors and investors are looking to make a return they're not looking to gamble maybe some <laughs> but they're not looking to gamble they're looking to make a, a return so the higher the interest rates and the and the more sense those fundamentals of that economy make then it means that capital will flow into that specific those specific economies and out of the economies that have lower interest rates and the, and the fundamentals are not making that much sense of interest rates maybe staying higher for longer or increasing that is what i wanted to share with you guys at the moment i'm still treating my flu and hopefully by next week i'll be good i'll be 100 percent and uh, i'll be producing more videos but if you found value from this video like i always say like the video uh share the video uh and also uh don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed and if you have any questions have any comments uh leave them down in, in the comments box also in the description box i won't go into it right now uh also in the description box there's a link for the website you can go there check it out uh if you want a one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation for 45 minutes you can also book it there so just follow the second link so the first link will be for the currency ranking spreadsheet then the second link will be for the website so you can go there and then book a book a, a, a 45 minute consultation that's if you want one and i'll see you guys in the next video